Minister Joshua Jenkins is a teacher, preacher, and business owner. He's the eldest son of Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. and First Lady Trina Jenkins. He was licensed as a minister at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, where he also serves as a young adult pastor as well as the drama ministry director. He's a graduate of Boy State University with a bachelor's degree in mass communications with a concentration in broadcast journalism and a minor in theater. Minister Joshua Jenkins has also been making his wave as a playwright, filmmaker, and director for the last 20 years. Minister Josh and his brother Jimmy Jenkins filmed their first budgeted feature film entitled Sinners Wanted, which debuted in theaters in spring of 2019 and on the TV One Network in 2020. It is currently available on a variety of streaming platforms. Minister Josh is also the co-writer, co-director, and co-producer alongside Anthony Brown of the Christmas production Some Way, Some how, which has been viewed by thousands over the past 12 years. His greatest joy is being the husband to Danielle and the father to three sons. First Baptist, let's welcome Minister Joshua Jenkins. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I've come to rejoice and be glad in it. Let everything that has breath Praise ye the Lord. If you're grateful this morning, if you're ready to leave different than the way you came in, I double dare you, I triple dare you to make a sound unto the King of Kings and the... That's cute, that's cute, that's cute. But God, I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, y'all. Listen, um, uh, today is a, is a special day. It is Young Adult Sunday, but um, listen, uh, I'm here uh, because our pastor my father, the John K. Jenkins, graduated yesterday. And so he can't be, he couldn't be here. He couldn't, he could, you know, not enough time for him to fly back and forth or whatever to get back. But take a look at the screen because we want to celebrate him this morning. Can we do that? Take a look at the, at the screen. Will the candidates for Master of Arts, Doctor of Psychology, or Doctor of Philosophy degrees please rise? John K. Jenkins, Sr. Now, y'all know he's watching. Will they can You know he's watching. You know he's watching. Can we give it up for our senior pastor? He didn't have to, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Can we give our senior pastor, Pastor John K. Jenkins, senior, some love? We love you, Dad. We're proud of you, Daddy. We're proud of you. Amen. 
We are proud of you, Dad. We know you're watching. You're inspiring us all. We thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Love you. And I'm going to do my best because uh, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so listen, he can't be here today, but I believe next week or the coming weeks we're going to do something on a very special Sunday. I think it's next week um, on uh, Remix Sunday to celebrate graduates with pastor as we celebrate our pastor. So next Sunday, come to celebrate him and other graduates. Amen. All right. Uh, first and foremost, uh, y'all can sit down. Y'all go ahead and sit down for a second. Uh, I got to do the proper thing. I know I recognize my dad, but I do thank my dad and my mother, First Lady Trina Jenkins, uh, for allowing me to be here uh, to do this. Uh, it is Young Adult Sunday, and I get to be the young adult pastor of some dynamic young adults here at the First Baptist Church of Glenarden. Uh, to the choir, young adult choir that's singing, all our young adult ministries. Uh, we got these shirts on because we're trying to make serving cool again. Amen. And so uh, we're, trying to set, we're trying to set an example for other young adults not to just come to church, but to come serve. Uh, there were people, there were people. Uh, uh, this church didn't just grow like this. There were people who, who paved a way uh, for some 30 plus years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. Uh, and they did it while they were young adults. So I'm trying to encourage our young adults to keep doing and following that footstep. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to acknowledge, of course, the elders, leadership of this church. Amen. I love you so much. Thank you for being here this morning. We had some of the elders who f flew back just to be here, so I thank you. Um, I want to honor my bride of going on seven years. She's fine as wine, and she's all mine. Danielle Jenkins. She's the best thing outside of getting saved that ever happened to me. And I thank God for her and our three sons, Jet, Jason, Jude. They're here this morning. Amen. Okay. I love you, Jace. That's right. All right. All right. If you can, uh, uh, if you can, could you turn your Bibles with me to Numbers 14? Some of the verse was read today. I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 10. Numbers 14, verses 1 through 10. Uh, say amen when you get there. All right, I got there pretty fast. This is, what the, this is what the Lord's word says. It says, so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying this, The land we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them and all the congregation said to stone them with stones now the glory of the lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all of israel i want to talk from the title of punked turn to your neighbor and say are you getting punked turn to the other side and say are you getting punked Will you pray with me? Lord, I thank you for this time, this day. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will use this time to reach somebody who's lost. I pray, God, that you will open up hearts, minds, ears, wherever they may be in the building or all across the world. Use me. I have a plan, but your plan is always better, so I submit to that. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I know that was a lot of verses, but um, bear with me for a moment. Uh, there was a show uh, that came out uh, in 2003. It aired on a, a station called MTV. It was created by a young man named Ashton Kutcher. And this show uh, was a prank show uh, that he would find celebrities and people and set up a scenario to either scare them, uh, to get them angry, uh, to get them riled up, only to get to a point where their anxiety or emotions were at its peak to come out and say, psych, you're getting punked. And so this verse is very punkish to me. Uh, it, 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 uh, it, it screams getting punked. Uh, and I, I say this for a few reasons. Let me give you some background here for a second. The children of Israel are camped out in the wilderness in Kadesh, Paran. It's in Kadesh. It's in the wilderness. It's, it's a couple miles away, some, mi some miles away from Canaan, uh, the land which God was promising to them. And they are following God by day and following God by night. Uh, they had already come out of Egypt. They had went through the Red Sea following Moses and Aaron. Uh, they received the commandments and they get to a point where they are on the brink of entering into the promise of God. So God instructs Moses to send 12 spies to go and spy out the promised land. Go and see that it is good and, 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 and scope it out so that maybe we can bring strategy on how you guys will move to conquer it because though it is yours, it is being occupied by somebody else. Okay. Yeah, I'll get that one in the morning. Um, and and, and uh, it, 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 it caused me to think that uh, uh, today, uh, in our, ch our church is in a season of transition. We're in a season of movement. Uh, but we are also on the brink. And there are many of you who are on the brink of God's promise for your life. And, and so this is, what the, this is what the spies do. The 12 spies, they go and then they come back to the wilderness with the children of Israel. And the spies give a report. And all but two of the spies have a bad report. They all saw the same thing. They all walked and scoped out and saw the same thing, but yet only two had a good report. And so what happened was they said, listen, the land, it definitely does flow in milk and honey. And there, was, there were two spies, one named Caleb, who stood up during the report and said, listen, we need to go and possess the land. It is ours. We need to go get it. And the 10 spies, the other 10, said, oh, no, no, no. It is indeed good, but they are giants over there and their army is bigger than ours and they have resources that, that we don't have. And then what the children of Israel begin to do is punk themselves. We're in a posture right now today in our culture, in our world, in this country, uh, where Christians, believers, are getting punked by society, by, by opinion, by, by, by social media posts, and, 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 and false prophets, and, and television shows. And we are allowing this information to trick us from what we know God has for us. We're getting punked. Fear is tricking us. We don't understand the plan God has or desires for us. There are so many of us who are on the brink of promise, the promise that God has for our lives. We're in a critical posture where we can either go forward or we can retreat. Some of us came in here and you're in a wilderness. It's uncomfortable for you. 
You want to quit. You want to retreat. But it's my job. I'm preaching to myself. Uh, if you don't hear me, I'm going to preach to me. Uh, uh, there's some things that God has called me to. There's some assignments that I have. And they're giants over there. And they look bigger than me. But I dare not retreat. I won't punk myself. I will not punk myself. Okay. Uh, 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 so th this is how this... I got four things real quick. I got to move. I got... 15 minutes. Uh, I got four things uh, that I want to give you uh, to help you not have a punked mentality and to trust God so that you can receive his favor and his promises. Th this is the first thing that you do in verse two and four says, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better to return to Egypt? So let us select another, let's select, select a leader and go back. This is what they was doing, complaining. The first thing you gotta do is stop. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. This is what the word complain means. Complain means to grumble against, to blame, make a verbal complaint against another, whether proper or improper. Uh, uh, th this is what they said. This is what they listen to what they said. They said, if only we had died in the land of Egypt or if only we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? Would it be better for us to return to Egypt? See, some of us in our in, are in life, we're in a posture we don't necessarily like. And then we're in, a, we're in a season where we don't necessarily like. We know the promise, but the promise looks too hard. Huh? Uh, uh, okay, let me, let, me give you, let me give you practical because you're not getting that. Let me give you practical. You got bosses that you don't like. Uh, 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 you, got, you got family members who are ignorant. Uh, uh, you, 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 got, you got ministry members who don't get it, who just don't serve. And with the, the first thing you do is you begin to complain. You know, you, you know this, is, this is the thing about complaining. God don't like complaining. Uh, look in verse 11. In verse 11, he asked Moses, how long is these people going to keep complaining about me? When you complain, when you complain, it, it, you talk yourself into rebellion. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna like this because some of y'all just complain about everything. You complain about everything. Yeah, y'all ain't gotta like me today, but I'm, listen, I ain't gonna retreat. I'm gonna stand flat foot and I'm gonna tell you, you complain too much. God says, be quiet. Would, did I, would I bring you here just to leave you? Yet you are talking, your, you are talking yourself into retreating. Complaining, then tur complaining turns into gossip. You ever, you ever talk to somebody? Ah, uh, okay. Y'all, every nobody in here complains about their managers or complains about their parents, complains about their children. You complain about your leaders. That's what they were doing, complaining about their leaders. See, when you start complaining to somebody and then all of a sudden you get mad because they mad because they done painted the picture about a person that you complaining about, spreading poison. Stop come. Complaining. If God has you there, he has you there for a purpose. Instead of complaining, you need to ask yourself, God, why do you have me here? What am I supposed to get out of this? You complain too much. You complain in your marriage. You compl I'm just complaining, complaining. You know, we got, we got accountability friends. I'm, I'm going to my next point in a second. We got accountability friends. And our accountability friends, you know, sometimes... Uh, 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 we have to, we have to, when we can't figure it out, we, ourselves, we call our accountability couples. We have a few. And, and, and uh, uh, one couple, one of these couples, I was, you know, we, me and my wife were helping them through a moment. And, and I realized something. The more that they complained on the other person, the angrier they got. Because complaining will take you to an ungodly posture. So, 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 so you talk yourself into frenzies because you won't stop complaining. They talk themselves into thinking that where God had brought them from was better than, okay. Okay, that's why you, that's why you go back to boo-boo over and over again because you talk yourself into, hey, nothing else better for me. Uh, I, I'm going to be alone all my life. I, I, I'm never going to get married. You complain yourself into 
retreat. If you want God's promises for your life, stop. Okay. There's a song, there's a song, you know, we all go through life. We all go through life. We all, we all have trials and tribulations. There's a song, there's a song uh, uh, that, that, that we sing, that we used to sing. Uh, it says, I've had some good days. Uh, I've, I've had some heels to climb. I've had some weary days and I've had some sleepless nights. But when I look, And I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I, 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 I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds are low. I can hardly see the road. I ask a question, Lord, why so much pain? But you see, he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they can't say, they, they, they can't see. So I just say. If you're in the wilderness, this is a good spot to say, thank you, Lord. You don't know how rent is going to be paid, but thank you, Lord. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't, I won't, I won't do it. I won't do it, this is the next thing. This is the next thing you gotta do. Say, don't get punked, don't get punked. This is the next thing you gotta, you gotta do. It's in verse five, it says, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, but Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who are among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of children of Israel, saying, the land we passed through to spy out is exceedingly good. I want to paint this picture for you. Imagine this, this whole place. Ten spies come up here to give a report. And then me and Pastor D are the only two to stand up here and say something different than the ten. And the influence is by the many. So all y'all go with the 10. And you shun the two. But this is what Caleb and Joshua, they had courage in the midst of doubt. You got to have courage. Uh, 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 uh. It says they tore their clothes. So this is when they, uh, in, in those times, this was, a, this was a posture or an expression of annoyance, of, of, uh, of indignation, of, 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 of being provoked or, or having empathy or to, to, of, of unfair treatment to, to, to claim this is blasphemous. They tore their clothes and they addressed the children of Israel. They had to have courage. This is what courage is. Courage is the ability to do something that frightens one. Strength in the face of pain or grief. Ain't it crazy though? Here we are on the brink of the promise and our attention goes from the strategy to conquer Canaan to a war amongst each other. It's crazy that, that even in the church, we got to fight so much with ourselves. Like, instead, instead, of, instead, of, instead of saying, look, let's figure out how we're going to go to the promised land, I got to deal with you first. I, I, got, I got to deal with your stinking thinking first. I got to deal with your complaining first. So now I got, now Joshua and Caleb have to spend energy to motivate the congregation. If they, would just, if they would just have the courage, if they would just have the courage uh, 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 to believe in what God was going to do, Caleb and Joshua had 
courage. I remember one time my sister Sarah, uh, she plays basketball. Uh, she's the head basketball coach at the University of Delaware now, but back when we were growing up, she would go outside. She was a bit of a tomboy. She would go outside, play basketball with all the guys. And we had this one kid in our neighborhood who was just like some manner of child that was just huge. He was just, he was huge. And his name was Tammy. And so one day, um, I was downstairs playing Sega Genesis. Millennials know what that is. Gen Zers don't have no clue what that is. I was playing Sega Genesis and uh, Sarah ran into the house and her lip was busted and she was crying. I said, what happened? She said, Tammy punched me in, in the face while we were playing basketball. Her lip was bleeding. So the Holy Spirit came upon me. I said, Tammy did what? No, I, the Holy Spirit or what I thought was the Holy Spirit came upon me. I ran upstairs, got on my bike, rode down the street to go address Tammy. Uh, Tammy was bigger than every kid in the neighborhood. So I rode down the street and I showed enough to Tammy's house. He had a bat, you know, when the basketball court was in the driveway uh, and the driveway was slanted like this. So you were playing basketball with eight different people on a slanted driveway, but there they were in the distance I could see. And as I got closer, my heart started to pump a little bit more. And so I got to Tammy's house. I hopped off my bike and I ran towards Tammy. And as I ran towards Tammy, the bigger he got. Uh, uh, and and uh, I began to question myself, but it was too late at that point. I had to do something because everybody was watching. Everybody had seen me coming down the, the street very fast and hop off my bike. It was happening in slow motion to me. And I said, Tammy, you punched my sister. He looked at me in this grown child voice and he said, yeah. <laughs> and this is what he said. It was an accident. At that moment I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I just want to say, thank you, Lord. I, 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 I won't complain. I, 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 I said, okay. And I turned around, got back on my bike. By the time I got back on my bike, my sister was on her way back down the street to play basketball. See, y'all see, okay, y'all don't get it. Uh, uh, there was a giant that was bigger than me, but God stepped in. I, see, all I had to do was have courage uh, because if I would have gotten into a physical fight with Tammy, who I might not be here today, but thank God that he carried me. All I had to do was have courage. You got some giants in your life. You, you need to have courage. You're scared to go over there, but have courage. Have courage. Doesn't matter what the odds say, what the statistics say, what the world says, have courage. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I gotta go, I got two more, I got two more, I got two more, 10 minutes. I got two more, I got two more in 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. This is the, this is the third thing. You gotta stop what? Don't complain. You gotta have what? And then this is the third thing, you gotta resist fear and rebellion. Listen to this, in, in, in verse eight and nine it said, if the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, what are you afraid of? Fear, the Bible says, the spirit, the, God does not give us the spirit of fear. A, a fear is an indicator that something is wrong with you. Let's be clear. Uh, 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 fear puts you in a posture of automatic rebellion. If you fear something, typically, you won't do something. The children of Israel were fearful, so they rebelled. And this is, what, this is what Caleb says. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us. This is what the word delight means in the text. It says, it means a desire, a want. If he wants you to do it, he will bring you to it. He will bring you 
through it. He will give it. Don't rebel. Rebel means to revolt, disobey, or oppose. Do not be afraid. All right? We got too many people operating in fear, and it is, it is, it is paralyzing you from receiving the promises of God. We got so many people just scared to do so much stuff, you know, scared to, you know, scared to, scared to take a risk with God. If he told you, it doesn't mean that you won't be go through the wilderness. It doesn't mean that it'll be easy, but if he wants you to do it, then he will bring it to you. It will, he will take you through it. It says that they will be our bread. What that means is, is that it's, he says, Caleb says, their protection has departed and they will be our bread, which means we will devour them. We will eat them. We will conquer them. I'm trying to tell you, I declare and decree today that you drop fear and, and understand you will devour the next thing that comes. The promise for your life, you will go and accomplish it. You will conquer it. If you stop, if you resist fear and stop rebelling, I was afraid of clowns when I was growing up. Uh, clowns were, they were just terrible. I, I couldn't stand clowns. Still don't really like them too much. Uh, but clowns uh, uh, were terrible. I remember the first time my cousin Jada had a, she had a, a birthday party. And lo and behold, there was a clown there. All the other kids were joyful, but I, I was not so joyful. I was high. I was scared, and as I grew up, I realized where my fear of clowns came from. Because see, flee fear, you either fear information because you know, or you fear because of information you don't know. I used to watch this, there was a show called In Living Color. <laughs> All right, millennials in the house. Uh, there, there, there was a show called In Living Color, and In Living Color had a clown name Homie. And Homie the Clown was not your average clown. Uh, uh, homie had some anger issues. He had some, some emotional uh, unbalances and issues. And, and he had a song. And then he had a sock that when the kids got out of line, Homie would hit them with the sock. He would make up songs that were depressing and that were just so fearful. And so my information, I associated Clowns with homie. Ha ah, ha, help me, Holy Ghost. See, you associate certain things with your past. You associate marriage because your parents were divorced or because your friends are going through it. You associate a business failure with, with the economy and, and everybody else. And what I'm trying to tell you today is don't base it off of your perspective, but God's perspective. This is crazy to me. This is crazy to me. The children of Israel were fearful. But let's, let's just, can we just, can we just, I don't understand why. This is, because this is what has happened. They're at a point, they've been walking through the wilderness with God. Uh, but God had brought them through plagues. He covered them during the Passover. He got them out of slavery. They saw the Red Sea part and they walked through it. Provided bread from heaven. Victory over the Amalekites was with them in transit, a, a, a cloud by day, fire by night. Gave, I mean, he had done so much for them. The information that they had compared to what stood in front of them, what am I trying to tell you? If he brought you this far, he's not going to leave you today. What are you afraid of? You are rude, you're rude. You being fearful that God won't do it again is disrespectful. If he brought you through it before, if he kept your mind before, if he kept you from cancer before, if he kept you out of that accident before, if he brought you through financial struggles before, he will. Oh, 
Oh, some of y'all ain't never been through nothing. You never been through nothing. You never been through hell or hot water. You're basing the future based off of the past, but if you just look back over your life and you see all that God has done for you, you'll have no choice but to trust him. You should have no choice but to believe in him. Okay, so some of you might say, some of you might say, well, I, I don't have anything that God did for me. I don't know anything that God did for me. I don't think, I don't know, I don't know. There might be some of you who, are, who don't know Christ yet. Uh, uh, but, but if you don't know, this book has plenty for you to refer to. Uh, this book has plenty. This is the word of the Lord. It is true. It is vibrant in today's world. And if you don't know, you can go in the book and find example out of example. This book is not just a demonstration of God's word. This book is history. It happened. It's a real life history book. Look at what God has done for you find it in the book if you can't look in yourself find it in the book it's in the book all right I'm done dad I'm done I promise it's 10 5 I'm done I'm done I'm done I'm done stop complaining don't complain have courage resist fear and rebellion and this is the last thing you get to do who you get to watch God show up. Watch this. In verse 10, it says, And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory. <laughs> now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. So let me paint it. And I'm done. I'm sitting down. Let me paint it. Let me paint it. Let me help you get it. Let me help you. Let me help you get it. The children of Israel were scared. They complained on God. They started complaining that their, their, what God had brought them through wasn't enough for them to believe, to go and possess the land that God had promised them. So Caleb and Josh, only two, only two stood up amongst all the children of Israel and stood up for what was right. And at the end of their address, look, look, look at the end of the address. He says, Caleb says, do not fear. Only do not rebel nor fear. And then he says at the end, the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And at the end of that, like if I'm Joshua and Caleb, in this moment, after I explained all this, and I get up, I'm thinking that the crowd is going to say, amen, you're right. Instead, they say, stone them. Kill them. This is a punked moment. You're punking me. You're punking me. You're, you're punking me. You, you don't believe, you don't believe where we've come from. That God is with us. Why are we feeling the, why are we fearing us? Why are we not going to get the promise? You guys are punking me. And at the moment of truth, they said to kill him. And many of you are standing in the posture today and you feel like life is about to kill you. You feel like you have no hope. You have no strength. There is no way out. Uh, you are surrounded by the majority. Uh, you are in an uncomfortable state. And what's happening is you are at the brink of what you think is going to kill you. But this is, this is, this is what happens. It says in verse 10, this is what it says. It says, now the glory of the Lord appeared. Okay, let me help you. Uh, the, the word noun is an adverb. So it's linking the clauses, it's linking, it's connecting the phrases. They said kill them, but then God throws an adverb. Now, you, could, you can change, if, you, if, if now, if you don't like now, you could use something like but or uh, then. Uh, so they said to kill them, 
but the glory of but the glory of the Lord appeared uh, 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 this is what the glory means an, an attribute of God's glory refers to it refer, his majesty his splendor his holiness his power it appeared and in that moment God was saving Caleb and Joshua ah okay y'all missed it you missed it I know you're, you you're, you're tired you're at the brink you're at the brink where you want to quit but what I'm about to tell you is watch God appear his presence is all we need all we need is his presence all we need is his glory his splendor his goodness to fall just to come down amongst it said he came down amongst all the children of Israel I'm done watch God show up watch him show up watch him show up you don't believe me watch him show up you ready to quit now the glory of the Lord came down see y'all are y'all are missing it it's his glory that's going to come down it's his power his presence is enough to shift situations to shift circumstances his glory is going to come down uh, let, let, let me help y'all uh, with this. I'm done. Y'all can stand up if you want. I'm going to tell you this last story, and I'm going to do an altar call. Uh, sometimes, you know, God is here, and you don't really recognize that he's here. Uh, my son, Jude, he, my baby boy, he has sickle cell. And so, because Jude has sickle cell, uh, he has to, he has a, his, his immune system is, is compromised. So if Jude gets a fever uh, of any sort, we have, it's an automatic trip to the emergency room. Uh, so uh, last year, uh, I was going through a very busy season of my life. Uh, I was doing, we were preparing for the Christmas play and you know, in school, just doing this a lot. I'm tired, I'm worn out. And one day, um, um, I, I go to Christmas play rehearsal. I'm tired, I get home probably about 11.30, almost 12 o'clock and my wife is up with Jude and she said, he has a fever. I said, oh, Lord, I'm tired. Now I got to go spend three hours in the emergency room. So I take my son, put him in the car, go to the emergency room. I take him to the emergency room. They, they, they treat him, dismiss him. We leave about three, four in the morning. I'm tired. I wake up. My other two sons are now sick. So now I got a house full of boys. I'm trying to do what God is telling me to do. I'm trying to attack his promise. I'm trying to be obedient. I'm trying to follow what he's telling me to do. I'm doing the play. I'm going through all this. And now I got sick kids. So they can't go to school. I'm tired, then I get sick. So now I'm sick, the kids are sick, I'm going through it, I'm going through it. So we go through it. We finally get, to, we're home for a week. I'm tired. In order for them to go back to school, they have to have a doctor's note. Follow me. I go to take them to the doctor's, finally they're feeling better, take them to the doctor's office. So they do their regular checkup. They check their eyes, their nose, their mouth, and their ears. Jace gets checked out, Jude gets checked out. Jack gets checked out. The, the nurse says, oh, he has, he has tubes in his ears. I said, the devil is a lie. No, no, he, he doesn't have tubes in his ears. He doesn't have tubes in his ears. She said, yo, he has tubes in his ears. I said, no, ma'am, he doesn't. I had to call my wife. I said, do Jack got tubes in his ears? She said, no. She said, well, there's something in his ear. And it's green. I said, Lord, this can't get any worse. So, so I said, well, can you get it out? She said, I can't get it out. You're gonna have to take him to a specialist to get it out. So now me and my wife are panicking. Uh, uh, we call a place to try to get them seen. I mean, they don't, have, they don't have appointments for like a week. So I'm worried. I'm, I'm starting to complain. I'm starting to f be fearful. But then in the middle of the day, my wife calls me. She said, an appointment just just came up. Can you come home and take Jet? I said, yeah, I'm gonna come home. I run home. I take Jet. Well, I'm sorry, I don't run home, take Jet. She takes Jet. I say, will you take him? I run home and get, stay with the other boys or whatever the case may be, or her mom ends up having to meet her. We're just trying to manage this whole thing. But damn, my wife takes Jet to the, to the ear doctor and they pull out a piece of Play-Doh. 
that was covering up about 80% of his, his eardrum. I said, doctor, was it affecting his hearing? They said, oh, absolutely. And it had been in there for about a month. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. You missed it. You see, if Jude didn't have sickle cell, when he gets a temperature, I don't have to take him to the hospital. If I don't take Jude to the hospital, Jet Jace don't get sick. If Jet Jace and Jude don't get sick, they don't miss school. If they don't miss school, I don't have to take them to the doctor to get a doctor's note. If I don't take them to get a doctor's note, and the doctor doesn't check their eyes, nose, mouth, and ears, we don't find the Play-Doh. If we don't find the Play-Doh, it, it, it could affect Jet's ear and he lose his hearing. What am I trying to tell you? Stop complaining. Understand that God is with you. God is with you. If he's got it for you, he'll get you through it. No devil in hell can stop you. God is with you. The glory of the Lord be in this place. The glory of the Lord be in this place. Hallelujah. Stop getting pumped. Stop getting pumped. God says, see Josh, you were punking yourself, but I was with you this whole time. And instead of complaining about the opposition, you need to thank God because it's going to work. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? If you need to get saved, you're tired of getting punked, come meet me right here, right now. Come quickly. If you, if you know you don't have a relationship with God, come here right now. If you know you're tired of getting punked, you say, look, that's me. I'm tired of complaining. I'm, I'm in a partial life where I don't know God, I don't know Christ, but I want to accept him. 2,000 years ago, God sent his son Jesus to die so that you could be forgiven. And if you're in this place and you're in a posture where you feel like you got, like you, life is punking you, I want you to understand that God sent his son Jesus so that you didn't have to live a punk life. So if that's you, I don't care how old you are, I don't care what phase of life you are, if you know you are tired of the enemy and you want to receive the promises of God, come meet me right here real quickly. Say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm going to resist fear. It's a big church. I understand that. I'm going to resist fear and rebellion and I'm going to make my way to this altar to get saved. Jesus wants to forgive you. He wants to cover you. He wants to wash you in his blood. If it's you, make your way to this altar right now. You want to join this church. This is a good church to be a part of. Come meet me right now. All right, turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor, say, listen, say, do you need to go up there? Are you scared to go up there? Are you getting punked right now? Is the devil punking you right now? And if they are, say, I'll walk with you. Say, I'll walk with you. Say, I'll go with you. Say, but I'm not living my life like this no more. Amen. Hallelujah, sister. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, sir, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, my brother. Come on. If you're unsure, you don't know if you're saved, you don't know, God wants to forgive you today. We are offering forgiveness. Amen. God died on the cross for you. Let me say this and I'm going to end. Let me say this and I'm going to end. Um, in later verses, what happens is God... Uh, he pretty much, uh, he, he shows grace to Israel, but they don't get to see the promised land. But God remembers Caleb and he remembers Joshua. Make the choice so that God will remember you. Come on, that's all right. We'll wait for you. 
We'll wait for you. Come on, y'all. Give God praise. Amen. 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 Last call. All right, come on, sister. I see you. It's okay. We're going to wait for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'm proud of you. We're proud of you. God is pleased with you. You don't have to live your life in fear anymore. The devil's going to stop punking you. You're going to stop punking yourself. Put your trust in God. God forgives you. Don't care what you did. Don't care when you did it. He forgives you. He's going to forgive you today and you're going to leave out of here different than you came in. Amen? Can we give God praise for these? Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for these, your sons and daughters, Lord. I pray, God, that you will cover them, that you will keep them, save them, wash them in, in your blood, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, we bless you. Amen. These are counselors behind you. They're going to take you back to a room, pray with you, share some information with you. Amen? Amen. Y'all go right on out this way. Somebody give God praise in this place. <laughs>